Hi everybody and welcome to another Scratch tutorial, this time focusing on syncing external audio files with your clips inside Scratch. And there's three ways to do so, which is the manual sync, the semi-automated sync and the timecode based sync. So let's go for the manual sync first. As you can see I loaded a couple of clips into Scratch, which are ProRes files that already have sound on board. This is why there's a white speaker icon here. So to swap the internal audio against our external audio, let's go into the player, to the edit menu, and I'll proceed to, well, let's say this clip. And we can move directly to the frame where the clip falls. Here we are. And now we can go to the audio menu here, and this lets us load audio, either for the complete timeline which is preferable when you're doing finishing and you have a conformed timeline and you're getting the final mix from the sound studio. Or you can load audio locally, which means for each clip. So let's do so. Click the add button and now I'll select 45B take 3. There we go. And open it up. So now the audio file is loaded and linked to that clip with all its four tracks, but it's not really synced. We can do that by moving the waveform, like so, or dialing in a slip value here. Or we can go to the mixer, move it a little bit aside, go to the details tab. And here we also have a waveform, and we can perfectly search for the spike of the clap and move it in position accordingly, like so. But there's a faster way to do that. So let me quickly zoom out and move that spike anywhere. We can use the autosync function in Scratch. And these two arrows basically tell Scratch look in this or in this direction for the spike of the clap. So if we click this direction, uh, we're getting there. There we go. And now we can move to the next clip. Search for the clap. There we go. 4 5D take 1, add 5D take 1, there we go, auto sync, and we're already, yeah, that's it. And we can proceed to the next clip. So this is already a good way of syncing audio when you don't have a time code to link the two together. The next way is a semi-automated sync. This time we have the same clips here and let me select all the clips, go to media browser and what we can see here is that all those clips already have seen and take information. So this is either shipping with the clip itself or can be confirmed using an ALE from for instance Pomfort Silverstack or can be typed in manually while reviewing the clips. However, we do have seen and take information. So if we now go to the audio tab and select the match type to shot name or search mask, we can then tell Scratch to look for certain metadata in the audio file name. So when we look here, we can see that each file name of the audio files is made up of scene intake information. So first comes the scene, which is 4 minus 5D, then an underscore, then a T, and then the scene number. And we can teach Scratch this pattern. So let's go ahead and fill in scene name first, then an underscore, then a big T, and then the take name. So this is our pattern Scratch should look out for when matching the clips. So now Scratch will look for scene, and take information inside the file name and compare it with the scene and take information of each clip. And if it finds a match, it will link the clip. So let's try this. Here we go. Bam, all clips linked, but not yet synced. So now we would again go into the player, pull up the mixer, go to frame where the clap falls, so, do the audio, do the auto sync, like so, move to the next clip. 
So basically, this way we're saving time by loading a new audio file each time we're moving on a new clip. All right, and this leaves the third option, which is the timecode based sync. So let me once again load all the video clips. Here we are. And as you can see, when going to the media browser, these clips do not yet have seen and take information. All right? Let's give this a little bit more room. So, so those clips don't have seen and take information. But if we go to the audio tab and select timecode as our match type, then select find audio, and select the corresponding folder containing the WAV files, Scratch will compare the timecode of the audio files with the timecode of the clips, and if it finds a match, sync them, link them, and also slip everything accordingly. And if the audio files contain scene and take information, Scratch will add this info to each clip. So this is now metadata attached to each clip, which can be used for a burn-in for exporting. And to enable this functionality, you need to go to the system settings, preferences, advanced tab, scroll down to the media section, and there you'll find the audio push metadata option. Enable it, click OK, and from now on, scene and take information from your WAV files will be transferred if you sync the clips or link them in any other way in Scratch. Another thing to mention is when the audio device and the camera were gen locked and have the same timecode, but for some reason there's an offset on, on the audio, like let's say two frames. Then we can just dial that in. Let's say, well, add two frames to each slip value. And that's it. Or do a minus two frames. Or you can even switch off frames and calculate the offset based on milliseconds. That's very accurate. All right, guys, that's it for audio syncing. As you can see, now the audio icon here is a orange one or yellow one which indicates that there's external audio on this clip. Hope this tutorial was useful to you and see you next time.